Hello everyone, I am Triton Brook, and I'm very excited to start my shape lecture series. If you have any questions about the content I cover in this video, make sure to leave some comments down below, and I'll try to answer any of the questions I see. Uh, so of course, when talking about shape, the most important question we have to ask ourselves is what even is shape? In this case, we're talking about middle game shape. A single stone does not have any shape yet. Shape requires at least two or more stones in an area. And so now the question shifts to, what is good versus bad shape? And there are three criteria that you'll have to pay attention to in order to define your shapes. The first one is, does it have a strong connection? In the case of the three stones on the board here, they are definitely strongly connected. There is no way to cut these stones off. Of course, a strong connection does not mean it has to be so solidly connected like this. It just means that in order to cut this shape would require a lot of strength from your opponent. The second criteria is how many liberties does that shape have? This shape here is a pretty good example. With these three stones, you get eight liberties, which would mean that it actually takes quite a lot of moves from your opponent in order to capture these three stones. But there's one more thing to keep in mind. A good shape also needs eye potential. It may seem like this group can't really make any eyes, but it's actually quite easy to make eyes with these three stones. In an isolated position like this, black can play at either A or B to expand their eye space, which is why in the third criteria, we're calling it eye potential. So what happens if we get rid of at least one of these criteria? In this case, we can't get rid of the strong connection, but what if we take away the liberties on this group? If we add stones around it like this, the black stones now only have three liberties, whereas these white stones on the side have five. So in this case, you could say that white has a really good shape here and black is lacking in shape. So now that we've looked at the liberties, what about if we deal with black's eye potential? As we said, black can go to the left or to the right to build up eye space. But what if we add two white stones on just one side? Now, black should play at least one more move here. And this we could consider to be a good shape again because it lost its ability to make eyes on one side. And now the shape is strongly connected, still has a lot of liberties, and again has eye potential. And you can probably leave this shape for quite a while before it would become under a severe attack. So what if we add two more stones here for white? Now we can say that this black group has bad shape. It may have a strong connection and it might have many liberties, but the eye potential is extremely limited now. This is what we would call a heavy shape. However, we can change the situation one more time. What if we add two black stones on this side. Well, now the situation has changed again, making these two white stones weak increases black's eye potential. And so now we could say that these three black stones actually have a good shape and these two white stones are in bad shape because this connection in the center here grants black more liberties than either of these white groups on the outside, making it the stronger group. So now we have the three main criteria for judging if a shape is good or bad. And even if you just lose one of those criteria, you start to fall into the category of bad shape. You have to actually keep these three criteria in mind when making your own shapes. And there are six moves that I would call the building blocks of shape. And those would be the Nobi here, the Kosumi, the one point jump, the two point jump, the Knight's move, and the large Knight's move. Anything that's further than the two point jump or the large Knight's move starts losing its strong connection and therefore can't really be considered a good shape anymore. Let's go over these moves one by one and talk about their strengths and weaknesses. First, the Nobi. This is considered a very solid shape. It is impossible to cut through this shape, but it also is quite slow. You only really want to play this if you're trying to prevent your opponent from either getting forcing moves or from disconnecting you. It is often good to use this sort of shape when building a wall. Next, the Kosumi is another one of the solid shapes, except in this case, instead of just extending liberties like the Nobi would, the Kosumi is pointing you in a specific direction. Often, when you need to run towards something, as a weak group, but you don't want to get cut, you want to try to play a Kosumi. Now there is a very, very slight weakness to this shape, and it can only really be taken advantage of in a Ko, because if white plays here, black should always connect on the other side. However, a Ko can sometimes give white two moves in a row. Next, let's look at the jumping moves, the one point jump and the two point jump. The one point jump, is really good for building box like Moyos, as well as escaping from your opponent's areas. Compared to the Nobi, it has a little bit less of a connection, However, it adds that slight weakness in order to move a little bit faster. In this case, the weakness would be this wedge here. However, without any strength nearby, it is difficult for white to fight. If black just Ataris and white extends, black has to choose whichever side is weaker to connect on. Then when white cuts, black simply saves his stone, white saves their stone, and you get this sort of pinwheel formation. I might make a video about this crosscut style of fighting in the future. However, just know that normally this is considered an even fight 
when black loses this stone here. And if this is an even fight, then when black has this move and gets to play one more move, you must agree that this is a really good fight for black. And so while the one point jump can be disconnected, it's difficult for white to fight, and thus you can consider this a very strong connection. And the two point jump adds a little bit more weakness to go even further. However, you usually only see this sort of two space extension on the sides of the board, because it's much easier to handle any attempts at cutting the shape. Usually you would only see this sort of jump if black has some extra stones around to try to make a little bit of ice space in the center. In this case, the stones still have a strong connection. Instead of only being able to cut one way, your opponent is able to cut in two different ways. When white plays here, black has to hane, and the proper way to cut this shape is this double hane. However, when black cuts, white extends, and black has a few options here. But if we just follow that pinwheel shape I showed you earlier, black could connect and white could extend. And this is the same as cutting through the one point jump. However, what makes this connection a little bit weaker is that when black hane is here, white can extend, black blocks, and now there's a cutting point on either side. This is usually not going to be good for white because black can ladder the other side. However, this is another option that white has if they have some extra strength in the area. And this is why a two space jump is as far as you want to go in terms of having a strong connection. Any further than this, and there becomes more ways for your opponent to cut the shape. So now that we looked at the jumps, let's look over at the knight's moves. The regular knight's move is nothing like the kosumi, and that the kosumi is pushing you in a specific direction where you're trying to run. The knight's move is often used to push your opponent in that specific direction. Because it's a little bit easier to cut this position, you don't really want to run with it. The, might, the knight's move is primarily an attacking move and is rarely used except in special circumstances or for special tactics. And the weakness for the knight's move is what is known as the waste of the knight's move, either of these two points. If white plays one, black will definitely play the other. And then white can cut. Of course, black can just ladder the stone if they wish. But if we follow the pinwheel formation again, when black extends here, White has two ladders to worry about, and so it's quite difficult to cut this shape without any strength nearby, or without having at least one of the ladders. So again, this is a strong connection because it is difficult for white to fight. Now let's see the large knight's move. In this case, you very rarely will see the large knight's move. It might be on the side of the board because it's easier to deal with any sort of cutting points. And you might also see it as a special tactic when trying to escape from an area. However, I think the, the biggest use for it is to close a moyo. Instead of jumping and expanding the moyo, it's often good to try to close it off a little bit more. Now, just like the two space jump, the large knight move also has two different ways to cut it. First is of course the waist, like so. If black tries to connect, white just cuts and black cuts here. This is similar to the knight's move, just like how the two space jump had a similar variation to the one space jump. And this should be a good fight for black. However, white can also try to attach to one of the stones, forcing a different style of cut. This should still be difficult for white, but it's just another thing to look out for. So let's take a quick look at some good shapes here so you can see how all the stones are connected and why I said that those six moves are the building blocks of shape. If we look at the table shape, which is like this, you'll see that there's a knight's move, a one point jump, a one point jump, and a nobi. If we extend it here, it becomes a large knight's move, a knight's move, a one point jump, and a nobi. All of the good shapes should have some sort of connection like this. If we go to the dog's face, it's a one point jump and a knight's move. You could call it two knight's moves. And even the really popular shape, the panuki, is just a bunch of kosumis or two one point jumps. Even the shape from earlier that I was showing for black to make some extra eye space here is another good shape. It's a two point jump. You could say it's a one point jump here, but it's also just a couple nobis. So using this idea, it's easier to find the next correct move to potentially make some better shape here. You could jump up here. There's the knight's move here, the large knight's move. You could even jump from this stone and go that way. It entirely depends on your opponent's shape and how weak or strong you are. And the next video we'll be discussing the good and the bad shapes. But this one, I just wanted to keep to the very fundamental idea of what shape actually is. So let's review really quick. Shape needs a strong connection like so. It has to have a lot of liberties and it needs eye potential. And of course, there are six moves that are the building blocks of that shape. Be the nobi, the kosumi, the one point jump, two point jump, knight's move, and large knight's move. That's as far as you can go while maintaining a strong enough connection. Even though this video seems simple, it is very important to understand this basic idea of what shape is. So my suggestion is whenever you are playing a move in your next game, 
always think of these six moves to try to play as your next move. And when you are approaching your opponent's stone, you can also think of these six moves as a way to approach your opponent's stone. No matter where it is on the board, as long as you play one of these types of moves, it'll almost always be an okay move. Throughout the series, we'll go into a lot more detail and see a lot of examples of how to actually use this shape. But for now, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Have fun!